Hey students, it's Emily Poole. Welcome to one of my favorite units in this course, Unit 4, Scientific, Philosophical, and Political Developments. And as always, we're going to start out with a contextualization video. Just a reminder, the AP test loves asking questions about contextualization. What is contextualization? You are situating an event in history in the context in which it happens. Here's how I tell my students to try to think about it. Back in the day when I was growing up, I had to watch TV shows once a week. There was no Netflix. There was no binging TV. So at the very beginning of every episode, there was a 30 second clip that was a recap of previous things that happened in this series so that when I start this new episode of TV and I see a character that I haven't seen in, I don't know, if we're looking at Grey's Anatomy, 17 seasons, then I will know immediately what's going on when I see that person because this recap thing reminded me of it. That is an easy way to think about contextualization. What do I need to know in my brain about the topic so that when you start talking about the topic, I'm like, oh, oh yeah, obviously. So let us contextualize the scientific revolution and the enlightenment. Think back way back to our first unit of study. It's 1450. And what are the Europeans very excited about? Oh, those old Greek and Roman texts from antiquity. Oh, the rediscovery of those works has led to everything that we've talked about in this course so far, directly or indirectly. And that's definitely going to continue in unit four. So remember that during the Middle Ages, the Catholic Church was like, hey, Europeans, these are the things that you can and can't do regarding science. Like, for example, no dissecting or desecrating of a human body. Also, the Earth is at the center of the solar system, which, y'all, if you just think about it, can you feel the Earth moving right now? No, you cannot. So it makes sense. It makes sense as to why people in Europe believed that for a very long time. But the rediscovery of Greek and Roman texts, plus an increasingly literate European population, means that early scientists, early thinkers, are going to start critically looking at math, empiricism, and the way the world works. New ideas in science based on observation and experimentation challenged the traditionally held view of the cosmos. Students, it's also important to say that these early scientists were not directly trying to challenge the Catholic Church, very similar to Martin Luther here, right? He was trying to reform the church from within. These early scientists were trying to figure out the intricacies of how the world works because they thought that it would bring more glory to God the Catholic Church put Galileo on trial and call him a heretic and made him recant all of his findings? Sure, but we'll get there. In this unit, you have two major themes happening, the scientific revolution and the enlightenment, and then the impacts of those things on society. In the scientific revolution, scientists like Galileo or Newton or Kepler or Vesalius or Harvey are trying to figure out the natural laws that dictate the world around them. And in the Enlightenment, these Enlightenment philosophers like Locke, Hobbes, Descartes, and Rousseau all try to figure out the natural laws that dictate humanity. The so scientists are like, why does the world act the way it does? And these Enlightenment philosophers are like, why do people act the way that they do? And both of these together lead to an increasing emphasis on reason in European society. And the Enlightenment, specifically with its focus on reason, rationalism, empiricism, really continues to challenge the role of faith in society and the role of government in society. Not to be outdone, a group of enlightened economists called physiocrats then challenged mercantilist policies. So to summarize, students, scientists are going to challenge the supreme power of the Catholic Church over affairs of science. Enlightenment philosophers are going to challenge the prevailing governmental systems like absolutism and lead to more secular methods of government and honestly more democratic methods of government or just really anti-absolutist at this point. And these physiocrats, these enlightened economists are like, hey, uh, capitalism, what about this thing? It's a really funny unit. Make sure that you are following along. Students, this is also a unit where you just need to memorize people. That happens very rarely in this course and you will need to do it now. So if you need extra help with that, make sure that you check out my ultimate review packet because I have the most study skills for you. And you can find the link of that below. As always, students, you can do it. I believe in you.